little delay. Hello, hello Facebook. Hello YouTube. I'm very sorry I'm filming it this way today. For some reason it didn't want to let my phone rotate when I was recording it, so I'm so sorry. Um, but we will address that issue and fix it for the next time. But right now we're going to crack on because we've got a lot to get through today. I'm joined by my friends on Instagram. Just make sure that my phone is straight. Welcome to everybody who is new. I can see lots of new names and faces. Um, so those of you who are brand new, you're really welcome here. Welcome to my farmhouse kitchen. I was just saying to my friends on Instagram here, we've got a beautiful sunny day here down in the West Country. I don't know what it's like where you are. Do let me know. Love to know. It's always good to get a global weather check, isn't it? And we are global. Let me know where in the world you're watching this, if you're watching it live, or of course, if you are watching it on Catch Up. Um, those of you who are watching on Instagram, uh, I put all the links in my bio, so everything that I talk about, there's a little thing called Linktree, if you click on that, then you'll find a whole new world of lovely links, podcasts and features and articles and discount codes and all of that, um, because I can't link directly on my feed here. Those joining me on, Inst on Facebook Live, I've got the lovely Lainey looking after Facebook today, so hello Lainey saying a big hi. So a lot of my team obviously are working remotely, working from home, just kind of logging in. And Facebook is better in some ways because we can do the links. That's my coffee machine. I never learn, do I? It goes off at like 12.35 every day I'm here in my kitchen. So I'm sorry about that. It will stop in just a moment. It's just having a little cleaning moment. Nearly stopped. Well, today, as I mentioned on my Instagram stories, if you were looking at me first thing this morning, uh, I just popped onto my stories, just did a little quick, uh, little quick chat while I was finishing the school run. Before doing some exercise, I'd literally just drag myself out of bed. So no judging, please, as to the way I looked, because I hadn't yet had my shower or put any face on. Um, but I did mention that I would be talking about kombucha and fermenting today, and I'm really thrilled to be joined, hopefully in a moment, by one of the founders of a really lovely British kombucha brand called Mighty Brew. Yeah, Mighty Brew. And I first came across these guys when I was hosting the Handmade Festival. And many of you crafters will know that the Handmade Festival is something that in previous years has happened every year, every summer, particularly at Hampton Court. It was something started by Kirsty. Uh, who you know from Location, 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 Kirsty Alsop, and she's a great crafter and maker and all of that, and I've been helping her host it on the days that she hasn't been able to host. So one of the great things about that festival is that it has lots of independent, small retailers and people making interesting things, and I came across Mighty Brew Kombucha. So it must have been, I think, last year. Anyway, I had some samples of that delicious Mighty Brew, and obviously, you know me, I've been brewing my own kombucha. This is my own here. My goodness, look at this scoby. It's going a bit crazy. It definitely needs separating. It's a bit squashed in there, isn't it? I need to sort that one out. Um, but I've been brewing my own kombucha and using a scoby to make this fermented tea drink, gosh, for at least 25 years. And I, I did it a lot back in the day. And then I kind of forgot about it and went away from it, got out of the habit. And then, of course, with all this emphasis on gut health and probiotics and looking after our microbiome, everybody started talking about this new thing called kombucha with a scoby. And I was thinking, hang on a minute, I used to grow that in my airing cupboard years ago. So I got back into it and I absolutely love it. And my children love it. And it's a really nice alternative when you want something really tasty as a soft drink and you know that you're getting good gut bugs going on at the same time. So let's see if one of the founders of Mighty Brew is with us to join in the chat. So let me have a look here. Mighty Brew Kombucha. Let's see, it's always a bit, um, a little bit of a perilous moment, isn't it, when you say that you're gonna go live with somebody to see whether they are actually there. So hopefully my Wi-Fi will work. I've just remembered actually, I've got a teenage boy upstairs on the internet. So hopefully that's not going to delay um, or impact on my system. I might have to see if I can get a message to those upstairs to uh, get off the Wi-Fi. Uh, waiting for Mighty Brew, it says. Lots of lovely chat going on Instagram, really nice to see. And also, oh, thank you very much for putting the code. So we've got a Liz Loves code on Mighty Brew to get a free one of these if you order some of their kombucha. 
then they'll put in a free bottle of the um, this one, which is the winter chai, which I absolutely love. So actually you're going to get a free big bottle somewhere. Bear with me. I've got a big bottle. Uh, so, oh, this is, no, sorry. You get the free smaller bottle. It does come in the larger size. Now it says, Mighty Brewers unable to join. I wonder why that is. Um, oh, Alison loves beauty. My scoby is in the fridge. I'll be making some today. Um, okay, so I wonder if it's because my internet is not running so well. So, Lainey, you are on Facebook. If you are able to get a message to the boy upstairs, if you can just say, please come off the internet, just in case, or anybody else who might be using it, that would be really helpful. Hopefully somebody can actually go and knock on his bedroom door and say, come off immediately. Um, I'm going to try again. Let's try again here, see if I can go live. Apologies if my internet is not going to be up for it. It's a typical Monday morning, isn't it? Coffee machine, internet, just shows it's live. The perils of live, live television. I should know all about that because I started on live TV. I started, it's actually 32 years ago this November. I started with Richard and Judy when the very first programme started for daytime TV, which was this morning. Um, and yeah, I just thought, my goodness, who's going to watch daytime television? You know, because it was such a new thing back then. And of course, it just became this amazing, just amazingly popular TV programme and is still a great show. And of course, I'm still on it. Yes, I'm still on it after all these years. I had a bit of a gap. Uh, but now I'm back on it, not with Richard and Judy, of course, sadly, but with Holly and Phil, which is great. And I've got a series that started a couple of weeks ago called Healthy Living at Home with Lizelle. And that uh, went out unexpectedly last Tuesday. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was going to go out on Wednesday. So apologies for not letting everybody know. Um, but uh, now Mighty Brew, it says that you're still unable to join. So if you're watching this, just to say you have to join on a phone. Um, so I don't know whether you're trying to join me perhaps on a laptop because it doesn't like that. But these, honestly, these techie things that you learn as you do this. Yeah, so you need to join on a phone. So I hope that Rachel is going to be there. In the meantime, what I might do is just, um, let me this morning, by the way. So I'm hoping that my episode, my next episode of Healthy Living at Home uh, with Liz Earle on this morning should, fingers crossed, go out this Wednesday. But of course, they might decide to run it tomorrow. So I've got a call into the producers to say, any idea when you might be running it, just so I can let everybody in my fam here know. Um, but yeah, hopefully that will come out soon and we will put a notification up both on Facebook and on Instagram, obviously, as soon as we know. So let me have one um, last little go here. Mighty Brew Kombucha. Let me see. If not, I've got plenty of other things to talk about while we sort out our techie issues. I've got always so much, isn't there? There's always so much to say, so much good stuff. So it says it's waiting. So in the meantime, I showed you, I think it was on Friday, if you were tuning in in real time or if you've watched on Catch Up, this lovely thing, this real pretty, which arrived. So this is from another female founder brand. It's a lady called Donna May, and actually very much related to this morning because she runs the makeup for Loose Women at ITV and the Loose Women Studios are right next door to this morning studios and I saw a lot of lovely pictures of my old pals there when I went in last week to do a little bit of voiceover recording for them. Anyway, she has got this great makeup brand, makeup accessories really, called Donna May London and she gave us a great discount that we've got with Liz Loves and this you can see on there it's a makeup. So I know it looks a bit like a shower hat, but if I open it up, I don't know whether you can see this, hopefully you can see this all right. It actually goes flat like this. So the idea is that you pop all your makeup in and then you can lay it flat so you can see exactly what you're dealing with rather than having to kind of delve around in a really dark makeup bag. Spread it all out, lay it out flat, and then, you know, do whatever you want to do. Or maybe you're using it as a, as a sponge bag. And then when you've finished, all your little bits and pieces are just just juice it up together and there you go good to go isn't that neat I love it anyway I've got some of my supplements in here which I'll be talking about in a minute but also just to let you know that Donna sent me these really cute face masks so look at this isn't that fun and it kind of adjusts like that so it gets really lots of nice covering and you've got your little um where is it little embroidered this is her signature pair of lips on there 
So this is a really neat one. And also I love this colour. Look, this sort of pinky leopard. Isn't that fun? So do check out her website. I said do check out her website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because she's got a discount code but it only lasts until Friday so if you want to grab any of her things and she's got really lovely accessories she's got um, bars that you can use in the shower that I think she gets from Turkey which are really lovely I've got an olive oil one let me just check on there yeah Donna May Liz loves all in capitals gets you 10% off her website but that is just until Friday now some of the things that I've actually got in here you may have spotted are my Nusen Health supplements and this is a range that I've really got to know and love. As you know I'm not big into supplements but there are a few specific ones that I do take especially at the moment and one of the pieces that we've got online actually is all about burnout. What to do, how to avoid it, you know we've been going through months and months and months of stress and how can we support our immune system and just give us the extra oof, bit that we need to keep going and I think you know, facing these winter months, we're all going to need it, aren't we? So some of the things that I've been talking about have been magnesium in particular, mighty magnesium, an amazing mineral. We've got a piece about it online. If you want to know a little bit more about magnesium, then do head to lizardwellbeing.com to read all about it. But it's, it's involved in so many things, magnesium. We need it to help absorb vitamin D, which is really important for our immune system. Also really good for bone health and bone strength. Magnesium helps with anxiety. So really good. It's known as a sort of the calming mineral that keeps us all a little bit more chilled it's really good for sleep and I take at the moment I'm taking three different versions now you don't need to take all three seriously you can you know you can get it obviously from food but you know I think a lot of us are perhaps needing a little bit of a top up with magnesium so the ones that I take are these so I take Naked Pharmacy this is a brand that I've talked about a lot because I also take their Safra Sun which I really like, which is a crocus extract. And again, that's to do with sleep and anxiety and just keeping everything calm. I give it to my kids. There's a children's version of Safra Sun, which is great. And if you want that, you get a discount on that. That's Liz Loves 20 on Naked Pharmacy. Liz Loves 20. I don't think it applies to subscriptions because that's kind of an ongoing thing. And ultimately, I imagine our Liz Loves discount code will sadly come to an end at some point. So grab it while you can. Um, but this is their magnesium. It's a marine magnesium and it is combined with turmeric. So turmeric is again a spice that I've talked a lot about. I make turmeric chai lattes. I put turmerics in sauces and so many interesting things. You can juice it. You can buy the little knobbly turmeric roots, which you can juice, which is a really great thing to add. And lots of information on turmeric about being anti-inflammatory, helping with joint pain and stiffness. So I just like the fact that I can take my magnesium with a bit of turmeric. Now, the other way that I take magnesium is from Newson Health, and they have two versions of magnesium. Again, you can choose, you can take one or the other, or you can do what I do is I take one of each. Um, it doesn't actually work out any more expensive because obviously they last longer rather than taking two at the same time or the same one. I'm just taking one and one. So I take this one. This is magnesium plus. And it's got three different types of magnesium in it. As if it wasn't complicated enough. Magnesium comes in lots of different forms. So this has got malate, citrate and ascorbate. So it's kind of like a scattergun. Let's get a little bit of everything going on here. And this one I like because it contains B vitamins. And we know that the B complex are really important for our central nervous system. So again, all to do with anxiety, burnout, adrenaline, all of that stuff that's going on at the moment. And obviously, if you are not eating very much in the way of animal products, then you will definitely be needing some B12. So B12, you will need to supplement. And this does contain B12. So this one, the thing about it is the tablets are quite big. OK, but if you can see, they've got a line down the middle. I don't know whether you can see that. So you can actually cut them in half if you want to and just um, swallow them half at a time. So that's the magnesium plus. So I tend to take that doesn't really matter when you take it. I don't think morning or evening necessarily. You might have a view on that, but I just tend to take it first thing in the morning because I'm kind of up and about and taking my supplements then. And then later in the day, I take this one, which is Berry C Complex. And this also has magnesium. 
and it has vitamin C and it has berry extract. And these are the black berries that have lots of antioxidant activity, the anthocyanins in black skinned berries. So this actually has blueberry and plum and pomegranate as well, combined with the magnesium. So, you know, lots of different things. So I'm getting lots of magnesium, but I'm also getting it combined with other useful things rather than just taking it on its own. So I think, you know, I love a multitasker. You know me, I mean, I think so many women, we are multitasking, aren't we? We're juggling so much going on at the moment. Um, and actually, if we can have products that work really hard for us, then I think that's a really good thing. So there's 10% off everything at Newson Health, and that is through the nutritionist's website, um, Emma Ellis Flint, who I've podcasted with. She's great. She really specializes in perimenopausal and menopausal nutrition. So she's a great account to follow. If you're on Instagram, do follow Emma's Nutrition because she's got lots to say, particularly for midlife women. She does lots of cookery and all sorts. And as I say, I have podcasted with her. So you'll probably find that on my podcast um, library as well. If you pop in Emma and Liz Earl Nutrition, then you will find her podcast on all about nutrition for midlife women or menopausal women. So that's, those are the two that I'm taking. And the other thing that I'm taking also to really support brain health and cognitive function, need a bit of that, don't we? We need our wits about us at the moment, as well as so many other reasons, is of course fish oil. And we know that we should be increasing our intake of oily fish. We need particularly DHA. So our omega-3s, you've got EPA and DHA. They are abbreviated, really, really long chemical names, which I can't, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to say now, but just remember them as EPA and DHA. And DHA is really the one that we need to be watching out for. Now, this is the Newson Health Fish Oil Supplement, which I also personally take. And I like it because it's just one capsule a day. OK, so you, know, you can see in here I've been taking them. Just one a day of these. And this is giving me lots of DHA. It's giving me lots of EPA as well. And it's giving me my vitamin D3, so it's combined with that. And it's giving me vitamin E as well. So I really, I really rate that. And those of you who know and love Dr. Louise Newson, um, she's obviously the founder of Newson Health. Um, but she doesn't really talk about her supplements. You know, as a doctor, she can't promote supplements and she's not kind of commercially minded like that. But I discovered these and I said, look, you know, you need to bring this to a wider audience because you've made these specifically for midlife women as a really small capsule collection. It's not all bamboozling and, and baffling. There's just a few key things that can really help us. And of course, we need to eat well. You know, we need to eat, cook from scratch where you can, eat lots of greens, you know, make sure that you're having a wide variety of food in your diet, lots of nice fermented things like kefir and yogurt, of course, for probiotic goodness. Um, but there are certain things, I think particularly during the winter months, vitamin D, obviously essential. So that's basically my routine. So I hope that's helpful. If you want to read a bit more about burnout and ways to avoid it, then you can go to Lizard Wellbeing. You'll find that piece. I think it's up on our homepage at the moment because it's very relevant to right now. And yeah, lots of information. So do go and immerse yourself in all of that. So I'm going to move these out of the way just for now. And let's see whether... We can um, iron, yeah, iron is a whole other story. We'll, we'll talk about iron. I might get Emma actually to come back and do um, a split screen with me and we can talk about iron because that's really important. Right, okay, so let's see. So I think a message has been sent to my teenage lad upstairs. Yes, hello, we are working. Hi, Rachel, so nice to see you. Now, you may need to turn your volume up, my love, because I can't hear you very well. I can see you now. I can see you. That's a start, isn't it? <laughs> so do you want to turn yourself up? And I'm going to turn I'm going to turn my volume up here as well. OK, talk to me. Yes, that's good. OK, so I just need to explain to my friends on Facebook. I'm just going to move you up a bit because when I do a split screen on Instagram, I kind of disappear from the shot. There we go. I might have to bend down a little bit. Um, so, yeah. So, alas, on Facebook and on YouTube, of course, we can't split the screen. So what happens is I've got a little microphone that's pointing at my phone so we can hear you. Um, so where are you? Where are you talking to us from? So I am at the uh, Mighty Brew Brewery in a little corner of the Hampshire countryside. Excellent. Um, uh, yes, 
yes, in the brewery, but in the sort of in the side office. Uh, so live from there, and a beautiful morning, awesome Isn't morning it? with all the leaves falling. It was so calm and relaxed before they, they started going all IT difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's just life and we just deal with it and get on with it. It's fine. We're all friends here, so no panic. Now, interesting that you that you talk about a brewery. So yeah. um, so are you are you brewing these little friends? You can see you're probably going to throw your hands up in horror when you look at how I've jam packed my scobies and I'm not looking after them very well, am I? They are not. They're squeezed together. And actually, we thought just to give people lots of choice, we've got sort of Facebook and YouTube guys we've got lots of little weenie ones all in a jar oh, <laughs> oh my goodness so uh, Rachel's just held up a jar a bit like this jam packed with scobies oh my goodness how many have you got in that jar you've got like a hundred <laughs> It's like, it's like a raffle competition, isn't it? How many scobies can you fit in one we jar? We should Obviously, do that, you know. Guess the number of scobies in the jar. There's a lot. So tell me about your, your journey into kombucha, because I was just explaining to my friends here, you know, this is something that I started doing maybe at least 25 years ago, possibly longer. And it was just this really odd, strange, unknown thing. And, you know, my, my young children, I mean, Lily, who's now nearly 30, you know, she'd go into the airing cupboard and she'd find all these weird things growing and she'd like freak out. She'd go, oh, mummy, you've got aliens growing in the cupboard. What's going on? And then I kind of forgot about it and, and went away from it. But what's your journey? How, what, why are you so passionate about these little scobies and making kombucha? You know, I think in terms of, so, so there's uh, Peter, Julia, and myself, and, mm. it, and it started off with um, Peter and Julia, and I, I joined the very shortly afterwards. Um, Julia and Peter met sort of, uh, 15 years ago and made a transition themselves. They were loving the big city life in London, having lots of fun, but actually they, they met each other and started to question what they were doing and why they were doing it. And I really wanted to get back to, to nature more. And uh, Julia was already um, uh, a practicing vegan. And obviously, when you're looking at your diet, you know, how can how can nature help you to yeah. help yourself, help your health? Um, and that was really the journey that where they kind of discovered kombucha. And then um, actually together, we discovered the absolute joy of brewing it. Mm. I mean, there's just something so wonderful that you take such simple ingredients, you yeah. put them together. And suddenly there's this life, this life. It's world. like alchemy, it's magic. So talk us through it. So, but first of all, if, if you're going to make your own, or if you're going yeah. to do like, like Mighty Brew, you need your scoby. So you need one of these. These are sort of jammed together, but you need one of these sort of little thin pancakes. And scoby is, is um, what do they call it? Is it an, an anacronym where it's, where it's the letter? So it stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeasts. Is that right? Scoby. Uh yeah, beautifully done. Yep, Good. that is it. That's exactly uh, what a, a scoby stands for. And in terms of the scoby, you take um, the scoby in a tea mixture with uh, sweetened raw cane sugar, and you just let it sit um, together. So you've got your warm tea, your sugar, your scoby, and you leave them somewhere dark, somewhere cool, a little bit of warmth there, just to let it come to life and create your create your kombucha. That's your sort of your first stage that gives yeah. you your. First um, but then obviously people like to add things to it and try different things. So in terms of that, we then here at Mighty Brew, we go through a second fermentation. And so that's where we'll add the cured botanicals. So whether it's your lemongrass or your jasmine or your hemp, those lovely different uh, botanicals, which both give wonderful rounded flavour, mm. but actually also have traditional health benefits as well. Okay, so, so how, how, how do you do that? You talk about a second fermentation. So, you know, if I'd made my kombucha and I wanted to flavour it, what would I do then? I'd add like um, like a herb tea or, or a flavouring and then let it brew again? Yes, exactly that. So it has a, that's where we would say it was a double fermentation. So And that's where you really get the, the best of everything, I would say. You get mm. all the wonderful benefits of the original tea, which can be a black tea or it can be a green tea in, that, in terms of that first fermentation. And then you create a second tea, and you add that to it, and that's where you can add your botanicals or like juices and things like that. But yeah, ginger add... is nice. So yeah. when when you're making it, so you've got your scoby, and now with a, with a normal sort of scoby that's kind of that sort of size, maybe that I was putting into a jar, I would use maybe a liter of black tea, and I, I like to use Earl Grey tea. I just like the flavour of it. And I'd actually use quite a lot of sugar. It's quite scary, isn't it, when you make it because I'm using yeah. maybe 
five tablespoons of sugar in that but we needn't worry about the sugar need we because the scoby rather magically it just digests all the sugar it eats it that's what it uses to grow so Absolutely. so so, so okay. when you when you end up with this you're actually ending up with something that's pretty low sugar because the, sco yeah, the, the, the scoby's kind of gobbled it all up yeah exactly that so um, in, in terms of that uh it, it's exactly as you say the scoby kind of consumes the sugar that gives it energy um and then that means you end up with a lovely a low calorie uh, yeah. healthy drink which is an alternative to you know those those soft totally. sugar rich um, yeah i mean for, for my for my teens i mean if you've got you know kids at home perhaps on half term you know spending more time uh, around and you know wanting something healthy as a soft drink rather than going for like tin fizzy high sugar drinks or even cordials you know even juices fruit juices um syrups you know elderflower cordial all that kind of thing is is really quite surprisingly terrifyingly high in sugar now what about the gut benefits though because it's not just a nice tasting you know cheap and easy drink is it it, it does actually have benefits too talk us through those yeah, absolutely. So, in, in terms of that, um, when you're with, when you're brewing um, kombucha, it is naturally live. It, it, it naturally contains live cultures. Um, so, in terms of that, if you want a raw and unpasteurized kombucha, that's that's really important. But it's a right. great the probiotics, uh, naturally so. Um, so these are the good gut ba bacteria. So it's your minerals, your vitamins, your organic acids, um, all these things, these are nutrients that are really indispensable for, you know, your proper, the proper functioning of the body. And that's what's so fabulous about kombucha is feeding this good gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. And these gut ba good bacteria in, 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 uh, in combination with that are obviously helping you in other ways as well, whether it's boosting your immunity, um, but also those things in terms of nurturing your microbiome, obviously that's primarily in the, uh, within your, um, your di digestive tract, yeah. uh, something that is really, you know, it's really important to keep all those good bacteria going for you. Uh, the other thing is the gut itself, I mean the gut's known as the second brain. It is. Uh, it's, it's a strange one, but actually once you realise why it, it, it makes sense, you know, one of the, the major roles of the gut um, is to, besides um, digesting food, um, is also the regulation of the immune system. Mm. Um, yeah, I, mean, actually, I, mean, I, I think things that can support the immune system, you know, I, I think we have to be, be careful about using words like boost, but certainly supporting and just sort of enhancing overall health benefits. It's, it's just really a, a wonderful thing. Now, I want to pick up on something you said there, Rachel, because you talked about unpasteurized. Now, I've seen, as I'm sure you have, as, as a traditional, authentic kombucha maker, this huge rise. I mean, you're seeing it now in mainstream supermarkets, you know, all over the place, kombucha drinks, some of which are coming, you know, from Australia or whatever. They've been shipped halfway around the world, which is also not very sustainable. I would always say, please try and buy local kombucha at least to the country where you're living um, to cut down on some of those transportation costs but tell us about the, the bottling process and, and why it's important to, to have make sure that something that you're buying is unpasteurized yeah absolutely um whenever we talk about kombucha obviously we always always talk about these lovely little fellows the scoby the scoby um, reminder the scoby it's all about the scoby <laughs> very much like yogurt you know when you buy commercial yogurt you know they they make yogurt you know in these huge factories and i won't name names but some of the big big guys industrial manufacturing of yogurt they they make it and it has to culture and it has to have the good bacteria to do it but then they go and pasteurize it 
So, you know, to give it a really long shelf life and all of that. But of course, you're then buying yogurt that's essentially dead because it doesn't have any of the, the, the good beneficial bacteria. And you're still buying it thinking it's going to be good for my gut. Well, I mean, it'll have high levels of calcium and, you know, protein and all of those things for sure. But in terms of wanting to get something to, to help with the probiotic side, you know, you're going to be missing that. And I guess the same is true then of kombucha. Absolutely, it's exactly that, and beautifully put. I mean, it really is. There's a lovely comparison between you know yogurt and that huge range of yogurts that you get, and now mm. kombucha has become a lot more commercial. Yeah. Um, and as a result, the word is used, but actually, you need to look. At, you need to dig a little day, deeper. Always read the label. I mean, my team here know it's all about the labels, guys, isn't it? You know, sometimes you have to go shopping with a magnifying glass because it's teeny weeny yes. weeny print. <laughs> I mean, forget your reading glasses. You need your magnifier to see really what's going on here. But that's, you know, the devil is in the detail always, isn't it? It's like really drill down. That's what I love here with doing Liz Loves and talking about these is being able to shine a spotlight on the smaller, authentic brands doing things properly. You know, it's a tiny difference, but it can make a big change to, to how we feel. It's, and let's talk about some of the, um, the the varieties because since getting to know you guys, and I was just saying about how I first got to know you at a, at, a, at a fair, as a festival, I had a little tiny sample cup and I thought, oh, this is nice. And what I really like about your, your bottled things is one, when you open them up, I mean, I'll open this one here. I don't know whether you heard that, but it went fizz and you can see it fizzing. So it's active. Okay, it's light. So don't shake it too much, otherwise it'll over fizz. Um, but also when you keep it for a little while, you can actually see, you know, sediment in the bottom. I don't know whether you can see in, in the bottle there. You know, that's good stuff, isn't it? You don't want to be afraid of that. You want it to be a bit cloudy. You want it to have little bits in it. Yes, yeah. And as we say, if you see it, you know, if you see it floating in the bottle, that's lucky. That's a good thing. That's what you want to see. Yeah. I, I went away on holiday. I think I've said this story to, to my guys here before. And I left a half um, open bottle in my fridge. And when I came back, this was last year, it had grown a new SCOBY inside, which I then nurtured. I then got it out of the bottle and, and grew it into a much bigger one. And I was just so thrilled with it because I thought this is really authentic. I don't know, you know, how many brands you could actually then recreate it because you're, you're dealing with the real deal. This is really yes. what's going to help what's going on in here, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we've got here, you've, you've given me very kindly some samples. So I've just been drinking my way through the lemongrass, which I really like. That's really quite refreshing. It's quite light. This yes. one, sh should, now should I be cautious of this one? This is hemp. Okay, what, hemp. what's this going to do for me? This isn't going to make me go all funny, is it? This is, this is legal, is it, this kombucha? <laughs> Absolutely. We were at Brunoir and Ooh, our hemp before CBD and all those sorts of things, and it doesn't it doesn't cross into that area at all. Okay, it's very it, fizzy. Um, so it's got a lovely hoppy flavour. I don't know. Have a have a have a taste of that. See what you think. Oh, that is very different. Very different from lemongrass. Lemongrass is quite light and sweet. This one is almost like a light a light cider or a beer. You know, you could serve this to a guy. You know, in in a big big tall glass uh, as an alternative as a healthy alternative to, to a, like a pale ale i would think or a lager absolutely, absolutely. it goes really nicely with your sort of your bar snacks you know some peanuts and crisps yeah. and those sort of things and kind of the more american and european style of, of cuisine if you want to start thinking about pairing yeah kind of or flavor. have a curry you know curry night we, we had a curry um with my family here on um when was it either friday or saturday night and, you know, everyone was drinking beer because that's, you know, like I think we're drinking Indian beer or whatever with, with the curry. But this is something that you could serve as an alternative, couldn't you, as a healthy Absolutely. drink to go with a curry? Absolutely. And, I mean, for me personally, I'm, I'm not uh, sort of, I'm not a drinker. And what I love about um, kombucha and something like the, the hemp, for example, is you can, you can pair it with different things. So I still feel I'm getting the fun of different flavours and different flavour combinations with food mm. and and drink but at the same time it's it's a, a non-alcoholic alternative mm. as well yeah i mean great for drivers or for all of that you know if and when we ever get back to you know having guests coming and going out and seeing each other um really interesting question here um on my instagram uh says could you mix it with beer i guess you could you could dilute it with beer couldn't you to get some benefit yeah absolutely i mean um for here um, at my 
Shrewsbury. We do, we do some fun things. We make mm. mocktails and we do make cocktails as well. So you can, in that, I, haven't, I must admit, I've never mixed it with beer. I'm going to try. Go. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, I'm up, up for that. Absolutely. You know, anything that gets in the health benefits, even if you just mix it, maybe two thirds beer, one third, you know, you know you're, you're diluting the alcohol level, which is good and getting some benefits. Now you mentioned cocktails and I'm really pleased that you did that because that leads us on finally to something that, that we're going to talk about, which is the winter chai. And you yes. are very kindly, if anybody wants to order from your website, particularly maybe this week, you're going to pop a bottle of this in free if you use Liz Loves, all in capitals. And then what we're going to do on Friday, I've got another really good guest joining me on my Instagram live and we're going to make cocktails using this. So how are we going to use our winter chai? Well, we've, we've uh, come up with some uh, fun ideas for mocktails, uh, mm -hmm. just along the lines of this, the, the winter chai, give you a chance to Oh little... gosh, that is, if you like, do you like the sort of like fruitcake, um, mulled wine, cinnamon, yeah. what have I got in here? I'm, I'm smelling cinnamon, I don't um, know, what is there ginger, it smells like cloves. Yeah. You've got cinnamon, you've got cloves, you've got cardamom. Oh, that is good. That is really good. Do you know, I, I would put this over ice, maybe a teeny splash of vodka. Am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed to do that? It, 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 it tastes very good combined with uh, mm. other non-alcoholic things as well. But yeah, so we, we were in, uh, inspired by, um, I don't know if you're familiar with chai tea. Yes, absolutely, of course. So that, that was our kind of inspiration. Um, Chai tea, I think, has been around, legend uh, says, sort of for 500 odd years. Mm. Um, was originally made as a sort of uh, Ayurvedic um, mm. uh, medicine yeah. um, for a, a king in India, so the legend goes. But okay. actually, what's, it makes a fabulous, we thought, winter tonic. You've got these wonderful warming spices, yeah. your cinnamon, cardamom, and your ginger. Love it. Um, and and then we've actually combined it. So you'll notice there's quite a difference between, say, our centre and our winter chai in terms of colour. The centre, yeah. the centre green tea, which is why it's this beautiful light colour. Yeah, yeah. I can see the differences in the colours here. I can really see this one. It, I mean, it, look, it looks warming. It looks as though it's got all the gingery bits in it. So you've got Pua tea in there. You've got Assam tea. Mm -hmm. um, Got these wonderful warming winter spices. So just just what you need as the months get a little bit colder and a little bit yeah. of a boost, but it feels like a bit like a, an autumn or a winter winter punch. So something fun as well. And so on Friday we are going to make live here a kombucha mojito, I think. Oh, nice. Using, using this lovely uh, winter chai. So you can do it with or without alcohol. It will be a Friday, so it could be something for the weekend. Um, and if people want to order it now, will they get it in time for Friday? Absolutely, yes. If they, if they order with us any time up until um, midday on Wednesday, we can Great. get those winter chai out to you. Absolutely. So Excellent. Have some a fun friday a fun friday i look forward to that rachel it's been a real pleasure to talk to you thank you so much massive uh, continued success to you and all of you at mighty brew down in a little corner of hampshire brewing up wonderful colonies of scobies just don't let them escape will you no no keeping them safe <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks for being with us <laughs> bye <laughs> thank you oh wasn't that fab so, you know, kombucha, it's just one of those things. It's lovely to share because it's something that works for all ages. Um, it is low sugar. I saw some of the conversations coming on about diabetics. I think that's a medical thing. That's beyond my pay grade, I'm afraid. But, you know, just check the sugar content on the bottles. Everything is on their Mighty Brew website. But yes, if you are looking at a lower sugar alternative, certainly things like fruit juices, um, then this is the thing. So I hope that any of you who fancy a Mighty Brew mocktail or cocktail... Um, don't forget you'll get your, your winter chai free um, and you have got time to put in an order before the end of the week. Or indeed if you're making your own kombucha, which you may well be brewing, I know lots of you are brewing your own scobies, so hopefully you'll have that ready. If you haven't yet got a scoby and you are inspired by this to have a go for yourself, then don't forget that you do get one in the good gut box. So this was a little carefully curated little box of six sensational ferments um, that I put together with a company called Freshly Fermented, 
which is another really great artisan British brand, also based in Hampshire. Interestingly, a lot of fermentation going on down in Hampshire. And one of those ferments that you get is a SCOBY. So it comes in its own little pouch and then you can get going. But it takes about 10 days, 10 to 14 days to actually turn your SCOBY and your black tea and your sugar into, um, into a proper drink. And then, of course, the great thing about making SCOBYs is they make babies. So what happens is you start with one SCOBY and then, you know, when you've brewed it, you end up with another one and then another one and another one. So you end up with lots that you can share um, or you can put them on your compost heap. Apparently they're really good for the soil. You can you use them as sheet face masks. You can cut little eye holes in them. I mean, there's lots that you can do. Apparently dogs love them. When I was talking about SCOBYs before, I had a message from somebody saying, did you know that you can dry them? cut them up into little strips and then give them to dogs who apparently really love them. So I don't know if anybody's tried that. I would love to hear. Um, yes. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lainey. You've popped the link up for Freshly Fermented. I've also seen that there is a bit of chat going on about what I'm wearing. So I, honestly, I have been living in these trousers. <laughs> I do have other things. But it's, you know, when you find a favourite thing, don't you find that you do that? You just tend to, you know, wear it and wear it and wear it. Anyway, these are my Borken trousers, which I do love, I have to say. Nice elasticated waist, which is very good after the curry night at the weekend. Put on at least three pounds over the weekend, but never mind, work it off. Um, and nice pockets, which I really like. And then this is a new arrival. So they've just sent this to me um, as a present. So thank you very much, the friends at Borken. This is uh, one of their new things. It's in sustainable viscose, which is a sustainable fabric. And it's stretchy, so it's really comfy, like the trousers. You know, you just feel that you can move in them. And this is a size 10 that I'm wearing. But I love the V-neck. You know me and these V-necks. I just think they're always so flattering to have something that, you know, takes your skin down if you are like me and kind of slightly round in the face. It just sort of elongates everything, gives you a bit more of a neck, I think. And of course, you've got your little necklaces and all of that. And sadly, we sold out of the eucalyptus necklace. Yeah, well done to all of those who got it. I do still have the eucalyptus bracelet, which matches it, and the little earrings um, and the rings, of course. I forgot to put my rings on before my live. Um, but they are also on 25% off on Lizelle Jewellery. You don't need any code for that. You just go on and they're up there. I think until the end of the month, so you've got a week or so. Gosh, and then we're going to be into November. How did that happen? Where did it go? I mean, and then, of course, it's Christmas. I'm not allowed to talk about it just yet. Uh, lots of chat, of course, topically at the moment uh, about menopause, because yesterday, hopefully you didn't miss it, um, it was World Menopause Day. Oh, thank you, Lenny. You've reminded me on Facebook. Yes, you do get your discount on Borken. Liz Loves 20, so Liz Loves Capitals 20, gets you 20% off things like this lovely shirt and these trousers, okay? And I did check before doing my live. They do have plenty in stock and lots of different sizes, so there you go. Um, but yes, yesterday was World Menopause Day, and I hope that you managed to catch the little kind of Zoom chat that I did with Davina McCall and Lorraine Kelly and Dr. Louise Newson. It is up, I think, it may be on Menopause Doctor. Actually, no, it's up on the charity website, the Menopause Charity Instagram um, and Facebook as well. And also it's on Own Your Goals Davina, which is Davina's fitness website. So that's, if you've not tuned into it yet, it's really worth a watch and a listen. And I just wanted to read out this... Um, this comment that I had that was forwarded to me, I don't actually do direct message on Instagram. I'm sorry about that. I just I just can't cope with it. There's, there's so many things um, in my life and it's just one of the things I can't do. But my team do pick up direct messages. And this came in from Marie Anderson. I hope you don't mind me um, reading it out here. And you say here... Um, Hi Liz, I've just watched your post about estrogel or estrogel. Having been going through the most horrific time for the past 10 to 15 years. Um, started age 38, approximately, perimenopause, and that's quite normal. So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, menopause, it's just for, you know, women who are much older. But no, perimenopause, when we start to lose our estrogen, can definitely be happening in our 30s. Doctors didn't have a clue, no support for years. Did my own research, realised um, what it was, you know, she said oh, she's had real issues with panic attacks, a mini breakdown, attacks in the middle of the night, etc. Anxiety, insomnia, severe PMT, crying and rage, could hardly leave the house. Eventually, 
she got to some HRT from her doctors, um, a gest uh, estrogen and progesterone um, and anxiety almost gone. Brilliant. Insomnia completely gone. Excellent. Lovely tick. Night panics gone. Excellent. <laughs> Um, can go in a lift after 10 years, phobias lessening, that is just brilliant. I'm also now on testosterone, so that's something that we talk about. Lorraine and Davina and I talk a lot about testosterone and how it's helped with mental function and mental ability. We all think of it as this kind of, you know, sexy, libido-enriching hormone, which of course it is, and it's, and it's definitely linked to that. But a lot of the use of testosterone is for memory and mental clarity. So really interesting. Um, uh, la 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 la. Um, I just wish the doctors would have listened all those years ago and not disagreed when I pleaded with them. Um, and then she just talks about you know how important it is to get really good help and that she's trying to get help now for her sister which is good um, and you know uh, there we go and it says uh, that she also tried Easter dose at one point she was given that by the chemist there's a whole big story as we know on Lizard Wellbeing do check that out Easter gel Easter dose this parallel import and this over labeling of products with Easter dose um, and she says uh, Easter dose I'm not going um, back to the Easter dose it wasn't working Okay, so this is something that is ongoing. I know I've talked about it in the past, but many women who do finally manage to get their estrogen gel, and it shouldn't be such a battle, should it? But for many of us, it is. You finally get your estrogen gel, and it should be estrogel, and then it doesn't work. And you think, well, why is this? Why is this not working? Do I need to use more? What's going on? And then when you peel back the label, you realize that it's something called estradose underneath, which should be the same. I know it should be the same, but it isn't. And there's something that's gone on. Maybe it's to do with the manufacturing or the storage or whatever. We're still trying to unravel it. So if that is you, you must report that, please, to the MHRA. They've got a yellow card app. In the old days, the, the GPs, if they had a, a problem with a, with a pharmaceutical product or something they'd prescribed, they'd literally fill out a yellow card. And, that's, and then they'd send it off to the medicines control agency. Um, nowadays you can do it on an app and you can report it and I know literally hundreds of women have reported Easter dose and you know I had some and I checked back it was some a batch that I had last summer and last summer I wasn't sleeping well I didn't know why and I thought I had to increase the dose and all of that and when I went back and, and I looked at the um, the pack I realized that it was actually Easter dose that had been over labeled and sometimes they put it in an Easter gel box so if you go to your pharmacy and you pick up your Easter gel, don't leave the pharmacy without checking it because if it's wrong, then you can take it back and give it back to the pharmacist as long as you haven't left the shop. So even if it says the Easter gel in the box, take it out of the box, check the pack, peel off the label, and it's really horrifying how many women have said that it's been over-labeled. Um, anyway, there's lots online about it. Menopause Doctor, on her website, she's got lots of information and a, a printout that you can take to your doctor, printout that you can take to your pharmacist to explain it, um, and also, obviously, on Lizelle Wellbeing as well. We've written a whole article about it, so I hope that is really helpful. Um, and if you know any girlfriends or you've got you know, relatives who are using the gel, just make them aware of this. You know, I was talking to a girlfriend just yesterday who was saying that she wanted to try the gel. And, you know, I, I talked her through the whole thing. And then she said, oh, yes, I'm going to be able to go and talk to my GP and I'm going to ask for the gel. And I said, that's fine. But make sure that your GP writes no parallel import must be Easter gel because we just don't know at the moment. We don't have enough information to know that the Easter dose that you're getting is from a good batch. So anyway, on that note, um, lots of chat obviously going on for World Menopause Day. You may be able to see here just out of vision, if I lift it up, this is my menopause cake. <laughs> so I made this. It's a recipe actually from my Good Menopause Guide book, which is, it's a lovely book if you haven't seen it, because half of it is recipes. So it's all 
phytoestrogen rich foods with low GI and lots of gut health and all the good things going in. And I wanted to make a cake that was high in phytoestrogen, so using soya and flax seeds and all of those things, not because they're necessarily going to replenish all our estrogen, but because it's a good talking point. And when I first wrote that book five years ago, menopause was still something that we just didn't really talk about. You might say menopause, you know. And it's amazing, actually, and that was something that Lorraine and, and Davina and I, you know, chatted about, uh, just saying how incredible it is that we are all much more confident now as women to go, yeah, I'm menopausal, you know, get over it. It's like, that's just a stage of life. And I know how to deal with it. And, and actually, it's a time that we should potentially be celebrating. It can be very liberating. But of course, we need the right support in order to do that. So this is my slice of menopause cake. It's very solid. <laughs> It's quite heavy. <laughs> it's not a light sponge, um, but it's got stem ginger in it. If you're a fan of ginger, then you will love this recipe. It's on lizardwellbeing.com. It's on the homepage at the moment. You can find it. I've also made it with spelt flour, so it's a slightly healthier flour. It's a little bit more nutritious. And you can have it just as a cake, but I like it toasted. So I actually like to slice it quite thinly. A little goes a long way. I keep it in the freezer, so I just pull out a slice at a time and then I just pop it in the toaster and then I have that with just either plain or just with a little bit of butter and it's like a kind of toasted tea loaf. It's like a healthy malt loaf, that kind of texture. Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed that. Talking about immunity again and burnout, I can see a few more comments coming in on that. Um, just to say that if you want your life armour, this is a freebie, okay, this is Super Me Plus, which has your adaptogenic herbs. I've talked about ashwagandha. There. This also has lots of magnesium in it, of course, because it's one of those minerals that we need. This is a £30 month supply, which also comes with a free um, little sample of the drops of slumber, which I use at night. And that's from Life Armour. We still have our discount code if you just want to order products from them, Liz Loves, on Life Armour. But at the moment, if you want to get your subscription to Liz Our Wellbeing magazine, you're going to have to be quick because this one comes off sale fairly soon. This is the September-October issue. And you can give it as a gift subscription and then keep the gift for yourself if you want. So, you know, it makes a nice early Christmas present perhaps for somebody um, because the next issue, of course, that comes out will be Christmas. Oh, I can't wait to share that with you. I don't think I've got... Um, am I allowed to show the cover yet? Maybe, maybe on Friday, maybe when we're drinking our cocktails and mocktails. Maybe I'll be able to show you the new cover because it's just lovely. It's all sparkly and fun. And we just thought, let's let's be uplifted. You know, let's let's talk about fun things that we can do, even if it's just within the comfort of our own home. I am going to be here most of today. I've got lots of books to sign. Just to say I'm signing these little beauties. These are my yearbook twos. Lots of great information. I just want to show you because there was chat about this. Um, Oh gosh, I may as well turn around here and just show you some of the things. This was the winter section and then in the autumn section there are some beautiful pumpkins. Here we go, look at that. I'm not a big fan of, of kind of Halloween and ghoulish pumpkins, but I do rather like them when they're painted. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And we're going to be popping lots of pumpkin inspiration on the website as well. How to bling up your pumpkins with paint and glitter and all sorts. Nice fun things actually for half term activities um, if you've got kids at home next week. Anyway, that's it from me for today. Thank you for being with me. Lots of lovely chat. I can see all your lovely comments. Thank you so much, so much. Everyone's getting ready. You're getting your social diaries together for Friday. Yes, get your glasses ready. Pop your little cocktail glasses in the fridge. Put a little tumbler in the fridge so it's nicely chilled ready to take your, your cocktail or your mocktail. Might be a little bit early in the day for a cocktail, but you can get some inspiration perhaps for later on in the evening or over the weekend. Anyway, I'm going to stick to my mocktails for now because it's Monday lunchtime. I'm going to be good. I shall see you very soon. Wednesday, in fact, hopefully back here live. Thanks for being with me. Bye-bye.